Hello friends, welcome to the Spoken Word, this poetry with a purpose. Today it's the apple of his eye six. Let's jump right on in there. During the time of Mordecai, during the time Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate, Big Thana and Teresh, two of the king's officers who guarded the doorway, became angry and conspired to assassinate King Xerxes. But Mordecai found out about the plot and told Queen Esther, who in turn reported it to the king, giving credit to Mordecai. Esther chapter 2, verses 21 and 22. This is called Chain of Events, and this is pretty cool. Let me wipe my glasses so I can see what I'm doing here. That's right. Amen. Here we go. Chain of Events. Like dominoes falling, each affecting the last, the effect of the former is the shadow life cast. For today, in this day, it's not autonomous alone, but reflects yesterday in the events that are known. And that chain of events, like a siren song calling, will show you the truth, again, just like dominoes falling. And we see that in Esther and in her protector, Mordecai. And because she was made queen, the king didn't die. For she only had access to the king in his heart because of Mordecai's guidance and the knowledge he'd impart. And so the circles complete, everything affecting the last. And so don't hate, and so don't hate your life just because of your past. Don't envy the, don't envy the ones who you think are so blessed, who in, the, who in the end you find out how their life was a mess. Just remember the truth that you are who you are now today because of what you went through even on the bad days. Now heal now, of course, from all your past woes, but finish life's race, race wherever it goes. And trust now your pa, just like Esther did then, who proved now her worth as the Jew's greatest friend. Amen. Chain of events. And this speaks to the heart of a lot of things in our lives. Because we're, like Paul said, you're forgetting the past and straying towards what's ahead. And God uh, doesn't, yeah, and throws things in a seal of forgetfulness and remembers them. No, so, so this idea of forgetting, I guess, I guess, especially our past mistakes and stuff. Uh, so, but let's get into this and read this. And I'll explain more with Esther. If you're not real familiar with Esther, I'll explain how that worked. Like dominoes falling, each affecting the last. The effect of the former is the shadow, uh, is the shadow life cast. Our yesterdays affect our todays. I mean, we can let them go, but the decision I make today will probably affect what's going to happen tomorrow. And that's what this is saying. There are dominoes falling. One one thing affects another, affects another. And that's just how this thing works. That's something called life. Yes, we can, you know, there's the new heavens and new earth when the former things will no longer come to pass. None of our past things will even be remembered, let alone affect anything. But in the life we're living now, yeah, there's cause and effect. And the cause today and the effect today may be the cause tomorrow. And so don't forget that. Let's continue on here. But I'll break down Esther for a minute. For today and this day, it's not autonomous alone, but reflects yesterday and the events in all. Today isn't an autonomous day, a singular day. Yesterday affects today, which makes it non-autonomous. So it keeps going. let's keep going. And that chain of events, like a siren song calling, will show you the truth. Again, just like dominoes falling. Again, a chain of events. And, it, and it's, it, it's calling forward into our lives tomorrow. It's amazing. It's like a message in a bottle kind of thing. Today, today is going to affect my tomorrow. The decision today affects my tomorrow. Amen. And we see that in Esther and her protector, Mordecai. And because she was made queen, the king didn't die. So because um, Mordecai, is, it was like his niece. He took care of her. She was she was related. I don't know if she was a blood relative, but he's the one that got her into the palace. He's the one that advised her and helped to to do all of that. And he's the one that, well, excuse me, he's the one that told her to keep her lineage secret. My mistake. But but because um uh it's because she was in the palace, she the king uh, Mordecai had king to the had access to the king's heart. Again, and so the, the big big Thana and Teresh's plot didn't come to pass. For she only had for she only had access to the king in his heart because of Mordecai's guidance and the knowledge in part. So because the way he raised her and what he advised her, she became the queen. And because she was the queen, the king was saved. You see how the chain of events are it's just so cool. Um, and so completes the circle, everything affecting the last. And so don't and so don't hate your life because of your just because of your past. I mean, Paul is a, Paul the apostle Paul is a really good example of this. 
That guy could have looked, look, I'm sure the devil tried to get him to look back with self-loathing and hate of himself because of what he had done to the church. And now he's a, 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 an a, apostle in that same church, which is amazing that God would promote a psycho guy like Paul, but he, God knew his heart and God understood him and why he, and the motivation, why he was doing what he was doing. So again, don't let your past dictate your future. Again. Uh, don't envy the ones who you think are so blessed who in the end you find out how their life was a mess. Man, there's so many. We all got someone. We go, oh my gosh, I wish I'd been this guy in high school. I wish I was this person now. I wish I looked like her right now or him. wish I had his strength. I wish I had his life. You see their life from the outside looking in. They live in the big house and they get the, you know, the guy's got the beautiful trophy wife or the woman has got the beautiful muscular guy and they drive nice cars. And But you don't see inside their whole life. You don't realize whether life is, 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 a, is a blessed life or a messed up life. Amen. Just remember the truth that's, that, you're, that, you are who, that you are who you are now today because of what, what you went through even on the bad days. I mean, you know, a lot of people, you know, if God allowed time travel, which he doesn't, thank God we can't travel in time, but no one in life would be moving forward. We'd always be going back to rectify um, past mistakes. The problem is once you change the past, the future automatically changes. My dad has a good saying about this, is that you change anything in the past and your entire future is either changed or erased. You could change something that could affect you how long you live, whether you had the same kids. You change anything in your past and your entire future changes. So God doesn't allow us because no one would grow old. No one no one would move forward. Everybody be time traveling backward to try and fix. You know, we all, we all make mistakes and we all, most of us have some regrets. I have a few. And if God allowed me to travel back to November 6th when my wife had a stroke or a year before that or... Or back, you know, my childhood, some regrets that I have, I would go back and try and fix them, but it would never work. Those those fixing mistakes would cause greater mistakes. Amen. That's why God does a lot of time travel. Thank God. And and remember, the bad, even the bad days, even the garbage you've been through is what made may have made you the stronger person you are today. Not that we're happy you've gone through bad days. Not that we've happened. Not that anybody rejoices in anybody else's abuse but remember those things not that God ordained those things to make you stronger but God you know he's the one that works all things to our good because we love him and call the corner purpose he'll take the the sour grapes in your life he'll take the misery in your life he'll give you as the bible says he'll give you beauty for ashes the ashes the burned up ashes of your past and all the destruction he will turn all that around and make it beautiful for you he's amazing he can do that um, now, he, now heal now, of course, from all your past woes, but finish the race wherever it goes. Man, get the healing you need. Absolutely. You've been hurt in life. You know, if you need counseling, you know, I mean, you've been through severe abuse and you need to talk to somebody. You need some help. There's nothing wrong in crying out. It's no lack of faith to say, I need some help. And there's, a, there's teachings out there. Well, if, if you had enough faith, you wouldn't be suffering. That's just a bunch of crap. Man, if this has nothing to do with faith. This is natural events in your life. Yes, you can pray for God's healing, but there's nothing wrong with getting the, you know, mental or psychological or physical, whatever kind of healing you need, sexual healing, whatever you need from your past that's been caused by your past. Get that help if you can find it. Yeah, if you pray and God delivers you from all of it, fantastic. But, you know, I always put it this way. You know, Luke was a medical doctor and God, God allowed a medical doctor to write two books in the Bible. So I don't think God has a big problem with physical medicine. Yes, the supernatural is real. But as I've told you before, you know, God told this guy, Reese Howells, Reese Howells Intercessor, an amazing book. But he told God, I act when people are at, when they reach the end of the rope where they got nothing left in the physical do, that's when I act. And I believe that tends to be true. God isn't putting on a big show for us. If you can take an aspirin and get rid of your headache, yeah, pray for your head, go away, fantastic, no problem. And Jesus laid his hand on Peter's mother-in-law and whatever headache or whatever she had went away, yes. You can pray for those things. But the aspirin is available and there's nothing wrong with that. It's no lack of faith to take an aspirin. I take a couple every day. And, you know, my right shoulder and different things like this. Could God supernaturally heal me? Of course he could. But until that day comes, I'm just going to keep accessing the physical things and I'm going to get the healing, whatever healing I need. Amen. There's nothing wrong with that. It has nothing to do with your faith. 
Amen. And finish your race wherever it goes. Whatever you got to do, however you got to patch yourself up, either spiritually or physically, or you got to keep the tires inflated and keep the engine running and keep the oil full and keep the gas tank full. Whatever you got to do for the car of your life, for the engine of your life, do it. Finish your race. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't let your past, don't let that chain of events destroy your future. You don't have to allow that at all. You don't have to let the, the chain that's behind you, the events that have happened, don't allow that to destroy your future. And again, amen. Um, and trust now your Paul, or trust now your God, who like Esther did then, proved now worth as the Jew's greatest friend. Man, this is so good. And trust now your Paul, trust God, just like Esther did. Esther trusted God in this situation. And and uh, and she proved her worth. I mean, she proved her worth because she's the one that interceded when when Haman Haman um, uh, wanted to destroy all the Jews. If you don't know the story, read Esther. It's a short book. You'll love it. But when when the the this Haman uh, Haman, one of the king's uh, guiders, guidance guys, who the king listened to, he made a decree. So all the Jews to be annihilated. So this was the first Hitler type guy, first totally anti anti semi guy who just wanted to wipe out. Because Mordecai offended him at the gate, and he just and he scorned the idea. It says in the Bible he scorned the idea of just coming against Mordecai. No, he decided to take out all of Mordecai's people, the Jews. I mean, this guy was a psychopathic idiot. You know, it's bad enough he had a problem with Mordecai, but now that extrapolates out to a problem with all the Jews. That's ridiculous, and so. Esther proved her worth by being able to intercede with the king. And the king didn't destroy the Jews. The king withdrew his hand. He couldn't change the edict, but he added to the edict the Jews could protect themselves and defend themselves. And so they did. And all the you know, all of the Jews and the king's enemies were destroyed, including Haman and his Haman and or Haman, H A M A N, Haman and his uh, three sons. And so Uh, <laughs> I fell asleep for a second. Anyway, apologize for that. <laughs> I'm a little tired. Anyway, um, don't scorn your past. Don't look in. You need some healing. Get it. But don't give up. Don't give up because you've had a hard life. If you had a hard life, it has served again. And we're not happy about your hard life that you've had a lot of life. We grieve with you over the pain of your past. We do. Mourn with those who mourn. Grieve with those who grieve. We're supposed to be sympathetic. And I am sympathetic and empathetic. But don't, 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 for, don't forsake your future because of your past. Don't give up on the plan that God has for you right in front of you because you've made some mistakes in the past. Don't quit. And don't let the devil keep you down. Love you, love you. Can't get enough of you. Sorry about the, the momentary lapse in awakeness. <laughs> It's it's not personal. I'm just tired, <laughs> so, and it's a rainy day. And oh man, I got my coffee, but it's decaf, so I ain't helping myself. Anyway, love you, love you, and we'll see you in I think Matthew or something like that, or Jonah. Jonah, we're finishing up Jonah today. Have a blessed day.